Well, good morning, Rad viewers. It's me, Rick, and I'm coming to you on a Sunday morning from a wintry Calgary. Hope everybody's doing all right. So uh, this morning, my wife and my son went to take the dog for a nice walk in a local park. So I've got a bit of time this morning. I thought I might uh, tour of viewers around my new pressure washer setup. I've been uh, posting a few pics on, a few teaser pics on Instagram, but I think it's time to just sort of let everybody see what I've got set up here and I'll talk a little bit about how this uh, project came to be. So stick around. Back on January 5th, I got an email from the president of AR North America. I couldn't believe it. And uh, he was just so complimentary about my uh, the various social media feeds and he just wanted to thank me for featuring uh, my trusty old electric pressure washer which was a rebranded AR um, cobalt from Lowe's and he just wanted to say thanks we appreciate the support and they wanted to know if they could send me uh, some promotional gifts as a thank you. We started talking back and forth and I let him know you know ever so slyly that I was well, I have been in the process of researching a replacement, something with a little more uh, oomph to it. So uh, I was always aware of the 630 TSS being, you know, a premier machine in the pressure washing world. So I started, uh, you know, making overtures that I'd be interested in, in learning more about it. And uh, through a few emails back and forth, I couldn't believe it when uh, he sent me a picture of this package that the team at AR North America had put together for me. So um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the issues, some of the challenges that came along with the install. And um, <clears throat> I think some of you who have ever done this kind of uh, install, you'll, you'll be able to relate really well. When the package arrived containing all the different uh, equipment, including the pressure washer, I was so excited, but I was also a bit nervous because uh, it's been my experience with, uh, with, I'd say almost everything in the garage that, I don't know what it is, maybe it's my bad luck, maybe this is something everybody feels, but uh, you know, a few snags always seem to occur. So the first snag with this project was that the uh, total stop system module had broken during transit. So after I got everything set up and I was all excited to test it out, I hit the power button, nothing happened. And I was just like, here we go again. Um, but uh, with, the assist with the assistance of my friend Sean, uh, we tracked it down and I should have known this, this module was hanging loose. And I just thought it was, I don't know, I thought it was some kind of, I thought it was just part of the, part of the pressure washer, but I was able to crazy glue it back together but the team at AR also sent me a replacement part should that fix fail. So that was, that was a major snag. But before I even got to the point of firing this puppy up, I had to do a little bit of uh, preparation on this wall. So why don't I walk you through that? So on this wall, I used to have two panels of this metal pegboard by Craftsman. So I removed the bottom one and I replaced it with a very solid thick piece of uh, wood and I painted it black and that that acted as a base for the mounting of this stainless steel shelf that I've got here so I uh, nailed glued and screwed this backing plate if you could call it that to the wall so then I didn't have to worry about hitting a stud and behind the drywall on this wall is also um, OSB um, so this is a very solid wall this back wall I've never had issues uh, hanging anything or mounting anything on this wall. So once I had that in place, I then mounted this, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's John Boos, B-O-O-S, stainless steel shelf, which measures uh, 24 inches by 16 inches. And it's very solid. I'm very confident that it can support this pretty heavy machine. This uh, pressure washer taps out at, I think, just over 60 pounds, somewhere around there. So then I had to run the water from the corner um, through this 10 foot hose I picked up on Amazon. And I had to then run the power because this machine draws quite a few amps. Uh, I had to snake this, luckily it comes with a really long electrical cord. 
I was able to snake it along underneath my stairs over to where I have a dedicated 20 amp outlet. So yeah, that was one thing I really was happy that I, that I already had was the, was the right outlet to run this, uh, uh, this beast of a machine. On top of the shelf, I just have a little bit of industrial rubber mat just to keep things from vibrating, making noise, and also gives this machine a lot of grip. At first, I was considering mounting this machine actually to the shelf just to keep things safe, but it's such a heavy machine and I, I don't see any reason to do that. So it is currently, it's not mounted at all. I then turned my attention to the reel, um, but unfortunately my local, my favorite local supplier was out of stock on this MTM reel. It's a hundred foot reel. But after a couple weeks, uh, it came in and I got to say, this was probably the most challenging. I wasn't, I'm not overly impressed with the engineering behind this reel. I did have more than my share of hiccups trying, just trying to get the hose hooked up. So uh, the team at, the team at AR sent me this hose. It's a 40 foot hose and um, they were really nice in, in, in uh, putting two female quick disconnects on it but I had to get the I couldn't get this quick disconnect off because I believe they use Loctite and I don't just I just didn't have the tools and then I thought you know what I'll uh, I'll get it I'll get it cut to the specific length I need for the garage and then that allowed me just to have the normal um, fixing uh, fitting put on so I can now go directly into this, um, this reel with my, with my hose now. I don't have to have a, a male and a female quick disconnect, which was just making things too cumbersome. And before I did that, I wasn't able to actually turn this handle. Now I can. Um, so after a few snags, a few, a few trips, I went up to see a company in Calgary called Greenline hose and fittings and they they cut this and thank you to them they didn't even charge me they're great guys so now I've got it all working that's the setup um, if you have any questions about it uh, please feel free to leave them below our comments are always welcome as well uh, I will say I know that this isn't the the most built-in system that you're gonna see on YouTube I really uh, I really admire you know, the, the garage guys that have gone to the extent of uh, piping this stuff in permanently. It's just not in the cards at this time uh, for me, um, but it is functional. I think it looks pretty good. And most importantly, it's just going to be a real convenience for me instead of dragging out the electric uh, unit like I had before and hooking up the hose and plugging it in and then getting it out of the way. Plus just having a quality hose is going to be such a game changer for me instead of struggling with that, you know, that, that, that plastic hose. So, all right, stick around and uh, watch me put this puppy to the test.
Okay, I'm gonna put the project on pause. Uh, hit a bit of a wall, and to be honest, the I lost the wind in my sails because I found a door ding on the rear door on the on the driver's side. So, oh, I try so hard to avoid parking lots, and if I am in a parking lot, I try so hard to get away from everybody, but these things are inevitable. So, it's a sharp little dent, about the size of a pea, and it's actually chipped the paint. So, uh, <laughs> It's a little thing, but man, is it going to be a pain because I'm going to have to have my dent guy get the dent out if he can. And then I'm going to need to see a paint guy about uh, touching that up and blending it in real nice because I don't really like the pens. So what I'll do is I'll cut out a little round piece of electrician's tape just to keep it over that wound, just to keep moisture and everything out because the last thing I need is any kind of rust starting in my car. So I'm going to go have some supper. I'm going to go uh, feel sorry for myself. And then I'll uh, finish off this project tonight and I'll talk a little bit about the products I used as well as how the pressure washer performed. So stick around. Okay everyone, that's a wrap. I just want to go through, I used five products to perform this maintenance wash, starting with my favorite all-in-one wheel and tire cleaner by Adams. Love this stuff. Comes out so nice in my little IK sprayer. I followed that up with the Kochemi GSF Gentle Snow Foam. Love this stuff. It's not exactly the thickest foam, but I'm, uh, I'm okay with that. It's, it's got incredible cleaning power. After the foam, this car was basically clean. After the snow foam, I used one of my new favorite uh, soaps called Double Tap uh, Infused Car Wash by Lithium. Thank you to Lithium. You guys have been sending me these products and it's much appreciated and they're awesome. Once the car was washed, I went over it with uh, one of my new favorite uh, products by Lithium. This is Ignite After Wash. It's just a nice way to make sure that there's no watermarks. You know, sometimes when you're drying, you leave a little streak. So Ignite After Wash is what I used to finish up the wash. And I tried for the first time <clears throat> Jack's Wax Tire and Trim Gel. This came in my uh, glove box welcome starter kit. And I really like this stuff. You know, I'm not afraid of a little gloss on my tires. I know a lot of people love the satin, but I love satin too, but I also love gloss. So. Yeah, Jack's Wax, Tire and Trim Gel.
thanks for joining me on this Sunday night wash. Uh, feels really good to have the SQ5 back to clean. It's been uh, way too long. Unfortunately, I did discover that door ding really kind of ticks me off, but gives me something to strive for. So I'll get that fixed up in short order. So I just want to say a huge thank you to Kyle and to Chad and to all the team at AR North America for hooking me up with that awesome AR630 TSS pressure washer. It was, uh, it was just awesome. My wife did complain. She said, man, that's a lot noisier than your other one. And I think it has everything to do with the fact that it's on the wall. So it is causing some vibration in the house. So I don't know if I'll be able to do my uh, midnight car washes anymore with the pressure washer, but this is a small price to pay for having such a quality machine. So thank you again to AR North America. And thank you to everyone for uh, tuning in and for supporting me and for paying attention and just helping me take this garage and my hobby of detailing to, to just levels I would have never anticipated. So until next time, stay rad. Stay